I'm wearing a mask is because I have a little bit of cold. So I don't want you to get that. So only that, I want to see my thing, okay? I don't want you to be in panic attack on me. Okay, so everything is okay. Ah, with God's help. So it's good to be here in the house of the Lord, to worship Him and to thank Him for His love and mercy. And today we celebrate in the Christian Church the second Sunday in Lent. We follow the order of service being created for this occasion. Please note that when Holy Communion comes, uh, we're going to do it in peregrine style. So you're going to go there and you come here. I will give you the, the bread and Ken will be with the, with the individual cups. If you re require or would like to have from the cup, I'm going to get it from here and I'm going to give it to you. Okay, you just let me know that you are coming. And then I will dismiss all of you at the end. Okay? Um, a few announcements before we begin our service. Again, welcome to all of you and those who watch us uh, online. Uh, for this week, remember that we have uh, Lent midweek services at Faith on Wednesday at, at 7 p.m. if you would like to attend. You are always welcome. Uh, congressional meeting, we have a congressional meeting at Faith on Sunday, March 19, and light snacks will be available. Uh, other announcements are here, but you could take the bulletin with you. I just want to mention men's breakfast and devotion on March 11 at 8 a.m. at Faith. So all men who would like to participate are welcome to, to attend there. Um, we are going to do another outreach activity around the area of grace in the community. So we are going to distribute around 200 packages contain, containing Easter pamphlets and an invitation for our services on, on Good Friday and Easter. So we might not have a breakfast as in the past, but we are looking forward to next year. But we could have coffee and some goodies to to share to one another. So I'm just going to put that in, in the invitation, uh, those, that package that gonna, we're going to be distributing in that area in order to invite people that, to come to Easter, Good Friday and Easter, and remember the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross for our sins. And finally, elders, we have elders meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. at faith. So all elders are welcome to participate. And just remember, what's happening next weekend, on Saturday, before you go to bed? Change. Yes, Spring forward. Yes, remember to change the time. Wow. Marks the beginning of daylight saving time. So, okay, so you need to be aware of that. So do it on Saturday when you go to bed, you do it. On Saturday, an extra hour. Okay, so we are ready to, to worship. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It all depends when you go to bed. Please rise at this moment and share to one another the peace of Christ. to all of you. You may be seated while we sing our hymn, opening hymn, See the Wonder to the Baby.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, God and my you trust. I trust. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and in teach me, for you are God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. We continue with confession and absolution, and please note that at, after each petition we're going to be singing one stanza from him to the omniscient Lord of all. O God, our Father, we confess that by nature we are sinful, and that in our pride we have turned away from your commands.
God loved the world so that he did. said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your great name so that you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people that they had acquired in Haran. And they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak at Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel, with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on, still going toward the Negev. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our epistle lesson this morning is from Romans 4, 1 to 8 and 13 to 17. The faith of Abraham who believed God is remembered. What then shall we say was gained by Abraham 
our forefather according to the flesh. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And to the one who does not work, but trusts him to, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. For the promise of Abraham and his offspring that he would be he would be heir of the world, did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For it is the inheritance adherents of the law who are to be the heirs. Faith is null, and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith in order that the promise may be rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus teaches Nicodemus about being born again. Please rise to hear the gospel. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do this thing, these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is a Spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where he, it wishes, and you hear it, its sound. But you do not know where it comes from, from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, you speak of what we know, and bear witness to what we have seen. But you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with the catechism part regarding the second article. In the second article of the creed, 
our confession is focused on Jesus, our Redeemer, who God in his love gave to bring uh, our salvation in the promise of eternal life. We speak the words of the creed. I, I believe, believe in Jesus Christ, Christ the only Son of our Lord, <coughs> who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe in Jesus Christ, true to God, the God of the Father from eternity, and also to man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, the lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns for all eternal eternity. This is most certainly true. You may be seated and continue with the sermon. <laughs> Said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry 
and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. Mm -hmm. And then you remember what happened. People got upset. Why did they get upset? <coughs> because apparently Zacchaeus was a bad person. He was a tax collector. And he had gotten rich by cheating his own people out of their hard-earned money. So, understandably, they were shocked. They were scandalized that Jesus would go to stay at his house. But that's what Jesus did. <coughs> that's what Jesus does. And he and Zacchaeus hang out. And Zacchaeus has a change of heart. He changes his ways. He starts a new life. It is a memorable account what Jesus came to do and how one unlikely individual responded to him in faith. Zacchaeus was a different man because of his encounter with Jesus. He was changed by the grace of God at work in his life. He repented and made amends to those he had harmed. And I believe it is fair to assume that the man who was ready to give so much to others was a man who knew the importance and the blessings of living day by day in a special relationship with the Lord of his life and the God of his salvation. I also believe that is what we see in Abraham in our text today. Every time we read a scripture, it is like a diamond shining with many different facets. And this time, as I read this text, the one thing that caught my attention this week was the fact that twice in our text, we are told that Abraham built an altar to the Lord. And in general, when the, the Old Testament speaks about Abraham and God, he built four altars. But in this text, there are two. The experience of God's love and the assurance of his guidance and protection day by day move Abraham to respond in worship and praise. His faith and his worship were not, ju were not just a Sunday morning thing. Abraham was a man who knew the grace of God in all of life and who responded to that grace day by day as he walked by faith with the Lord of his life and the God of his salvation. <coughs> My dear friends in Christ, do we make room in our lives day by day for the Lord of our life? Do we rejoice day by day in the good of our salvation? In the God who has given us salvation? Is God in a worship of Him a daily part of our life? I hope so. It so often seems that we take our faith for granted. Or that we only take it out to dust it off when we put on our Sunday clothes. But the rest of the week, in the midst of all the things that happen at work, at school, or wherever we may be, we often forget the God who is always with us, who always works in all things for our good. The God who has saved us by His grace is more often an afterthought than the center of our lives. The psalmist says to us, Psalm 105, verse 6, Look to the Lord and His strength. See His face always. Remember the wonders He has done, His miracles and the judgments He pronounced. All descendants of Abraham, His servants, we are the descendants. All sons of Jacob, His chosen ones, we are the chosen ones. 
As the spiritual descendants of Abraham, we are called upon to remember the Lord and like Abraham, to take our faith with us as we walk day by day with the Lord of our life and the God of our salvation. There is nothing so beautiful as the heart that sees the power of God at work in which responds to God in praise and thanksgiving. That is exactly the kind of heart we see in Abraham. As I said before, on four different occasions, we are told that Abraham built an altar to worship God. But would we expect anything less for Abraham? After all, God spoke to Abraham. We do not know how, whether directly or in dreams or visions, but he definitely spoke to him. <coughs> Once God even appeared to Abraham in human form to tell Abraham all that was going to happen to Sodom and Gomorrah. And not only did God talk with Abraham, he also made great promises to Abraham. Hear those promises. Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in, in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. He's referring to all those who live by faith. Us. God had big plans for Abraham. He made it very clear to Abraham that he was on Abraham's side and would be with him wherever he would go. With that kind of presence of God in his life, it seems only natural that Abraham should build those altars and give thanks to the Lord of his life and the God of his salvation. But it is not the altars that Abraham built that is important, but rather what they symbolize. In building the altars, Abraham took time to acknowledge God was the Lord of his life and the God of his salvation. God leads him to Sheshem. And Abraham builds an altar to acknowledge God's gracious care. And later, when he comes near Bethel, he does the same thing. Not, notice that each step on the journey seems to give him reason to stop and worship God. He saw God's wonderful, gracious presence with him, and he simply had to give thanks to his great and wonderful God. <coughs> so when was the last time you built an altar to the Lord of your life? By that, I do not mean that you actually build some sort of table out of wood and stone. Rather, do you give more than a passing remembrance to the grace of God at work in your daily life? Perhaps we think it was proper for Abraham to do this, since God obviously blessed him so richly. But why do we need to build an altar? We look at our lives and we realize <coughs> that there are times when we have every reason to give thanks to God. We may drop everything to acknowledge God's goodness in that moment when some great potential disaster has been averted such as when we are driving down the 401, we just miss being involved in a major accident. <coughs> but more often than not, we go through the day with nothing more than a passing thought to God's grace and work for our good. 
if we even acknowledge him at all? Do we even think about the fact that the God of Abraham is the same Lord who walks with us wherever we go? So that our journey through life unfolds under that watchful eye of a loving Lord who is at work in all things for the good of his beloved children. We seem to forget that it is by the grace of God that we have those days when life just seems to go on without a hint. We forget that God who is with us when we get a good job or when every light was green on our way to work in the morning we were running late. Do we remember his presence with us in that fun day we had with our family? Or as the one helping us to get that work project finished on time? Unfortunately, we are more likely to criticize God for what we think he has not done than we are to acknowledge his gracious guidance day by day moment by moment. And yet, it is only by His grace that we even have each new day we enjoy. The Lord of our life is with us, ruling all things for our sake. And yes, that applies even to those things that we see as terrible burdens. Even in those things we cannot understand, even in those circumstances when we want to question why God allowed these things to happen, He is still doing what is best for us. And when we think of all that our God does do, from finding lost keys to helping us through that surgery, we realize that we have every reason to give thanks and praise to Him whose love for us is so great that He is with us at every moment of our life. But the greatest reason to remember our God and rejoice in Him through all of life is the very fact that He is the God of our salvation. Abraham built an altar that he might worship and praise God. But there was another reason why altars were built to offer sacrifices for sin. On those altars, various animals were offered as substitutions for the people. The death of these animals was a reminder of how horrible sin is and how great the cost of it is. And when we look at ourselves, we see that we are sinful people. People who not only forget God, but who often turn away from Him to go our own way. But what sacrifice could we offer that would ever be enough? We would have to offer sacrifices and do nothing else. But even this would not be enough to pay the terrible debt of sin we owe. <clears throat> but the God of our salvation shows His grace once again. As He gives us the perfect sacrifice, He gives us Himself in Jesus Christ. Jesus is offered not on an altar, but on a cross. <clears throat> dying in the place of all sinners, including us, that we might have life in Him. His sacrifice and His glorious victory over death assure us that God is concerned with more than just the things of this world. He has dealt with our eternal salvation as well. Abraham built an altar to worship the God who was with him on his journey. He remembered to praise the God who had blessed him. He walked by faith 
with the God who has sent him from sin, death, and hell. We have every reason to build our altar as well. As we go on our way through life, we will see with the eyes of faith that our God is with us to guide us and bless us. And in each remembrance of his blessings, we will find new and greater reasons to thank and praise, to serve and obey him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We continue collecting the offering. One of the original purposes for the Lutheran Confessions was to respond to questions about what Lutherans believed, taught, and confessed regarding Christian doctrines. The Apology of the Augsburg Confession addresses the teaching about the sufficiency of the sacrificial death of our Lord Jesus Christ in this way. We teach that the sacrifice of Christ dying on the cross has been enough for the sins of the whole world. There is no need for other sacrifices, as though Christ's sacrifice were not enough for our sins. So people are justified not because of any other sacrifices, but because of this one sacrifice of Christ. If they believe that they have been redeemed by this sacrifice. For those who realize the price paid by Jesus on the cross to win salvation, the cross itself becomes a source of wonder and praise. That sense of holiness found in the cross is lyrically presented in the great Lenten hymn by John Boring, In the Cross of Christ, I Glory. We sing that hymn. <laughs>
Please rise to continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Jesus Christ and for all people according to their needs. We pray for all Christians around the world that as people united in faith, we may witness to the good news that is ours in Christ Jesus. Lord, bless our learning and our worship and our questioning and our study and our witness as we grow in faith and devotion. O oh Lord, hear, hear us for your mercy's mercy sake. sake. We pray for all nations of the earth, that in all places there may be times of lasting peace. We pray for people in lands where there have been upset and strife. We pray for our own nation, that it may know safety, and that people may be joyful in their daily lives. O oh Lord, Hear, Hear us for your mercy's sake. We pray for all those who labor, whose labor serve us as we live out our lives under your watchful eye. Especially those in the military, our police personnel, medical workers, and all those whose efforts support the common good. O oh Lord, Hear, Hear us for your mercy's sake. We pray for the special concern on our hearts today, including health and family needs, bringing to you our joys, our sorrows, and our hopes, including this morning, we pray for the family of Jason who passed away in a car accident, and we pray for his daughter Leila who, is, who remains critical, in critical condition in the hospital. We pray for Aiden and Karen that grieve the death of their grandmother Carrie. We pray for Susan, for Dorothy, for Jean, for Francis, for Anne and Mike, for Rainer and Marianne, for Mary, for Ritva, who is recuperating from surgery, for Marcus and Risto, for Lisette and family, for Barbara, for Geraldine, for Mark, and for Pastor Ron Moore. We pray also for the members of faith in London who are going through the same trials and tribulations and for those whom we name in our hearts and minds. Assure us that the sufferings of this present life are but transitory and that your grace endures forever. O oh Lord, hear us for your mercy today. We pray for the families in our congregation. Especially here at Grace, we pray for Ken and Sharon, for Gregory, for Lorne, Susan, and John, that our Lord guard them from all harm and danger, and they continue shining the light of Christ to those around them. O oh Lord, hear, hear us, us for your mercy's sake. sake. We pray for those who labor in foreign mission fields. <coughs> God will protect them by his holy angels and strengthen their witness to his Son. O oh Lord, hear, hear us for your mercy and sake. We pray for our congregation here at Grace and his mission to proclaim God's word to others. That God make us an outpost of the age to come, living already in this fallen world, the joys of a life that death cannot destroy. O oh Lord, Hear us, Lord, Heavenly Father, it is your gracious will that your children on earth live together in harmony and peace. Defeat the plans of all those who would stir up violence and strife, war and bloodshed, and according to your will, and the current conflict that now rages in Ukraine. Protect those who are suffering and being displaced from their homes. Bring a restoration of calm and security, and heal the wounds that have been inflicted. O oh Lord, hear us, Lord, 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 Lord. Joined to the generation of the faithful, we remember all those who have completed their earthly journey in faith and now rest from their labor. Lord, inspire us by the witness of the faithful from all generations that we may complete our earthly journeys with confidence in your gracious promises as they did in their lifetimes. 
we beseech you, O Lord, hear us for your mercy's sake. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. O Lord of heaven and earth, we thank you for having sent your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to be our Redeemer, saving us from the power of sin, death, and the devil, and blessing our life with lasting peace. Invited by your grace, we come to your table with gratitude and joy for all your gifts to us. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood that we grow as people of faith and peace, hope filled and eagerly awaiting the eternal feast in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Our well, Lord Jesus Christ. On the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. <coughs> this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. 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 Come, Amen. Lord Amen. Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. <coughs> so remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
may they preserve me in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace and grace. Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve your body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace and in great joy. Amen.
Thank you for all for coming. So it was good to be here in the house of the Lord to worship Him. And thanks all those who serve in the Lord today here at church. It's wonderful. Thanks for your help. God bless you. Go out and serve the Lord. Amen.